when it came time to choose up the side, you passed me by. I figured you could hit, but they thought I was bringing in a ringer. Yeah, yeah. Next week. Yeah. What changed your mind if I'm going to patch your roof? Oh, I don't know. Restless, I guess. Going back from the store this morning. Some kid I never saw stopped me by the sand lot. Says, you want umpire? I says, umpire? <laughs> Not yet, I said, kid. <laughs> so, I just thought I'd run over here like a... like a thief. Hey, come on, let's go right here, baby. Come on, now, let's go. Right over the plank. Joe? Joe? Yeah. Everything okay? What are you talking about? You see me every day, don't you? I don't mean that. I mean at home. Margo all right, the kid? Yeah, everybody's gorgeous. Hey, Seth. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'd stick around the house, just in case. Well, she had to know sooner or later. Oh, no, she would not if I had better timing. You planning to skip? Skip? What, for 360 bucks? Are you kidding? What did you have in mind? I didn't realize he was going to get back his canceled check so fast. I got a tax refund that's coming in. It's more than enough to cover this. I was going to sign it over to him and uh, you know, explain the bind I was in. And Maybe you'd consider it with a loan, and if he wanted anything for his trouble, then I'd manage that too somehow. But anyway, it was a shot I took. Bateman. You know, he seemed like a nice guy. I thought for sure he'd call me before I called you. Well, nice guys grow sensitive when um, zeros grow on their paper. You know, like the rest of us would. Great, this is Lieutenant Varick, Chief of Detectives. Varick? Right. Who's been eating oranges in here? Oh, the other shift. <laughs> you buy that? <laughs> Lieutenant, I think I've got enough trouble. Trouble? That's all I ever hear about. How do you take your coffee? What? What do you take in your coffee? Everything. Yeah. We've got one of those new thingamajigs for making coffee, a filter thing. You know? Lieutenant, you don't think I've killed somebody, do you? <laughs> no. Well, have you, as long as you're here? <laughs> no, I haven't. I mean, I understand I'm not under arrest yet, are there? That's correct. Well, you know, I mean, it's just that uh, you're being awful chummy for a cop talking to a check cutter. I get the feeling that any minute now we're going to swap recipes for spaghetti sauce. I don't have one, Lieutenant. I don't have anything you want. Well, maybe you're wrong. But you talk like a man that's been around with the police before. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I did time, 90 days. Juvenile, 20 years ago. And you know all about it because you looked it up. You took the time with all that you got to do to look it up. So would you please tell me why? <laughs> why did you change that check? I was two months behind on the house. On my house. I didn't have this new job yet, and I was in the hole. There are loan companies? <laughs> I wasn't going to get started on that. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I said that uh, I told my wife that I uh, wouldn't make any loans. She was half against the place in the beginning. And you? And I was sick to death of the old place. You get me. This, uh... This is the first time that she's had decent walls around her since I married her. So you gambled? Yeah, I gambled. This uh, new job of yours, how long have you had that? 
about a week. Old buddy of mine, school buddy, told me about it, and uh, you know I'm a lousy house painter. Like your new job? I like getting a check every Friday. Job, you know, I know one of two things when I wake up in the morning. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to load the cargo on the ship. Or I'm going to take the cargo off. It's, it's a job. It's... You uh, always work in the same district in uh, Verada? Yeah. I suppose you've noticed how that name's been coming up in the news lately. I doubt it, Lieutenant. We're talking about the high crime density. The uh, narcotics traffic and the loan shark business and four murders in six weeks. I knew it. I knew it, Lieutenant. You're on a long fishing trip. Well, forget it, because you hooked onto an old tire. Just uh... no, I don't think you've got anything to do with the crime in Lorada District. That's organized. The guys that work for that outfit don't get into penny ante trouble like you. So then? Well, it just so happens that uh, we run into each other at a time when we could be mutually beneficial. Or have you really forgotten? Oh. I see. I see. We're going to go back to the old days when I was driving a cab. Back when you were driving a cab? Yeah. Well, things are different now. I've got a wife, and I've got a kid. And besides, I don't remember coming up with anything that you guys thought was useful anyway. Never know. The point is that I need a pair of eyes and ears. You need a stool pigeon is what you need. I don't like stool pigeons. They turn their friends in. And when a man starts turning his friend in, I begin to wonder why. Anyway, half the time what a stool he brings in is tainted meat anyway. What I'm talking about is a paid informant. Unless you consider those specimens your friends. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but this head of mine, I consider a friend. Yeah, it can be dangerous. I'm not arguing. Oh, no, you're not doing that, but you're offering that. And you've already talked with Bateman. Yes, Mr. Bateman, and I have talked. Yeah, well, uh, he knows. So there's one on the outside who knows already. No, he doesn't know. What he knows, what he thinks, is that you did just exactly as you say you were going to do. You took your money and you turned yourself in. What? Yesterday afternoon, we gave Mr. Bateman a cash draft for the full amount. As far as he's concerned, the matter's... You... Well, what'd you use for money? Lucky bucks? Now the department has a contingency fund. If it hadn't, I might have paid it out of my own pocket. After a detour to the bank, that is. So now I'm down in your books for 360 bucks. Not exactly. You get the money, you drop it off, we'll be even. What would you expect? I gamble too once in a while. All right, then. What's my status? I want to know what my status is. I need your eyes and your ears. Anything, any small chunk of news that you give to me that I can use wipes your debt out. And anything else gets paid off at the same rate. Drake, you happen to be in a seller's market. Who takes everything? He does. Here. Wasn't that one of your boys that got knifed last week? Yeah. Yeah, Paul Fifield. Tell me just what kind of a market was he in? That was different. You want to join the force, you come in here and I'll talk you out of it. All I want from well, you... You got a 21 gun salute, that guy. What do I get? What does an informer get when he goes? 21 anonymous phone calls? What do you think about it? Oh, <laughs> Lieutenant. It's going to be awful hard not to think about this. Well, what? Thanks for the gamble. Thanks for your time. Hey, come on. Daddy's home. Hey. I'm so 
fine. Ah, uh, everything, everything is fine. Everything is fine. What did they want? Well, it was a check from Bateman. You know, the guy did the, the house painting for it. It was his mistake, too. Are you sure? Am I sure? Am I here, right? <laughs> <laughs> How much for lunch? Well, honey, when I thought, when I thought it was trouble, I phoned Father Cavanaugh. Hi, Joe. Hey, Sarge, yeah. Have you met the little lady here? Met her, auditioned her, and cast her. What's that? They're having a children's play at St. Aloysius, and they're short of wicked Roman soldiers. <laughs> Chris here has kindly consented to make a guest appearance, haven't you, Chris? Can I make a guest appearance? Can you make a guest appearance? Of course you can. <laughs> Everything's all right, then, huh? Oh, yeah. Just a misunderstanding. If the guy had called me, then I would have been able to talk to him and uh, would have straightened him out right down in there. But Varick did that. He straightened it out. So that makes it more or less official. Varick? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, come on. What about the household here? The little house? Not better than that honeymoon palace we had when you married us, isn't it? Yeah, I remember. I'm delighted, Joe. Margot says you got a new job. Yep. Yeah, well, everything's cool again. What section of the dock she didn't remember? Uh, well, you know, we move around. It varies. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm glad everything is back to normal. Yeah, it's all back to normal. And I will see you two again on Wednesday. And in the meantime, I want you to practice looking mean. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> That's amazing. I'll see you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Father. Thank you so much. things at your house. But at my place, Daddy's the president. Oh, that's very thrilling. Why don't you post for a picture in the back of a comic book or something like that? I know what you're trying to do. You think if you get me mad enough, I'll get off the stool, we'll walk outside, you talk me out of the fight, we oh, go you've home. You've got a terrific brain, Sal. Terrific brain. Come on, let's go. It ain't that. It's just that I know everything. Nobody knows that. Nobody appreciates it, but it's the truth. Come on. Who knows what's hidden under the candles? Who knows which inspector got smeared to look the other way? Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men, huh? Rosalia do. <laughs> Rosalia knows the weed of crime bears spit of proof. <laughs> Anybody following? All right, then you follow them and see that they both get home safe. but tell it to the guy that put the tap on your phone. Well, maybe we'll go back to using smoke signals. Anyway, it's on. Okay, we've got to line up now. Roman's on the right, Christian's on the left, okay? What about lions? Roman lions on the right, Christian lions on the left. <laughs> Here, let's get this right in the center of the table where you can all oh, get it. Okay, take it in and enjoy. <laughs> Good afternoon, drama. Hey, sorry. that was a lot of fun. And the brothers Rosselli nearly stole the show. Yeah, well, <laughs> all the men in my family are ham bones. Uh, I, I guess you're going to have to give us a lift home. Oh, it's early. Uh, Sal couldn't make it, I see. Yeah, that's just what we were discussing. Well, no, I told you his shift is working overtime. I told you that. No, he told me he was going to see his sons perform overtime or no overtime. Well, you don't think they. 
You two are working different shifts now? Yeah, since Monday. Why? I just wondered. Well, uh, might as well, uh, you know, I'm okay. trying, all right? I'm going to try and round up our cast of thousands. <laughs> Excuse me, telephone. Sure. Oh, okay, who wants some lunch, huh? Hey, hey, so hey, hey, oh, 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 very bad trouble, Father. We found his jacket first. Did it look like they wanted the jacket to be found? Yes. Oh, come on now. You can't be sure of that now. You could have just gone out and gotten drunk again. No, he didn't get drunk today. How'd you know that? How do we know that? We found something. My God in heaven. Did he uh, mention any names? No, he didn't mention anything. No names, nothing. Look, Joe. I don't blame you for being scared. Oh, well, now, that's a break for me. That just makes my whole day for me. All I'm trying to say is that I understand. The best way you can help yourself is to help us. You don't want to see them get away with it? He was your best friend, wasn't that's he? That's right. What? And I don't owe him a thing. Which reminds me. 360 bucks. Thank you for the loan. Goodbye. If it turns out you're withholding evidence... What evidence? You talk, Lieutenant, like you know something. And if you did, you wouldn't need me. Just stay away from me! Please. guys on his ship. Thank you. Hi, nice, Sarge. Glad you could make it. Come on in. Hi, Joe. You want a cup of coffee or something? No, no thanks. Hmm? Why don't you sit down? Go ahead. Sure. Why'd you call me? Well, you know what I've been doing? I've been sitting here wondering. You know that Sal was the only guy who really knew what this place here meant to me, this house. You know, we're kids together in a tenement, early slums. And his father was a super, and we lived in the second floor. Then we moved on up to the fourth floor, and then the rent come due. And then we moved out at three in the morning, which was... That was the time we usually moved out, you know. And I remember two years later, I saw Sal on the street, and I was so ashamed I could have just thrown myself under a bus. And, uh, Sal, uh, you didn't even mention it to me, you know. You just said, how are you, Joe? You said, how's it going? It was when we were 14 years old. I've been stuck in that neighborhood for 20 years, and he had gotten out. Because he couldn't stand it, and neither could I. And that's why I bought this house here. But Sal was the one that knew that uh, I couldn't make the payments with the kind of piecemeal work that I was doing. So he was the one who got me that job on the dock. And I've been thinking here. I've been wondering how I was going to pay him back. And I've stopped wondering now. Sarge, I want you to come with me somewhere. Where? I want to see Varick. Joe. No matter what you think, I'm not a cop anymore. You don't have to do this. Oh, yeah, I gotta do it. You know, I don't know too much, but I know a lot more than Beric does. 
Well, are you going to take me or not? Of it is genuine. Mm. They were expecting a cabin cruiser just like the one we nailed. But it never showed. The two on the cruiser checked out clean. What about the sailors? They must have known something about whoever was going to meet them. I doubt it. They're still with the Treasury boys. And up until this morning at 10 o'clock, the story was that they got paid off in Brussels took delivery in Antwerp and were never told who was going to relieve them of it here. It took a long time to drag that out of them. That's touching. Tricky, too. What with embassies and whatever coming into it. In the meantime, what's the message? I won't follow you. Barney, they know. That's why they didn't show up. It's possible. They probably think that it was Roselli. Maybe they'll act with a little less caution next time if they think they're safe. You're kidding yourself. Aren't you church types ever allowed to look at the bright side of things? Isn't it possible that they're not on to Drake yet? I mean, at all. <laughs> you meant not yet. Barney, if I were convinced that you believed what you were saying, would it mean I thought you were some kind of a fool? Well, I'm not going to ask you what you do think I am. Oh. Does he know about it yet that the cruiser didn't show? No. Yeah, well, I guess there's no point in telling him until you have to. And it'll feel good for a while. Have you had a tail on him? Yeah. Yeah, a good bit of the time. You mean somebody during their lunch hour? I mean as long as I can spare a man. A man? One man? Well, what do you suggest? Oh, don't answer that. Oh, look, Sarge. What good would it do? Sure, we can put him on round-the-clock surveillance. Or we can watch his house. Drive him to work and tuck him in every night. For how long? Two months? A year? They can wait. And they will. If they know, you know what he has to do. You mean like Frank Anders did? Yeah. Anders and a lot of other names that we're supposed to have forgotten. Change his town, his name, and his job. Frank Anders blew the whistle on a stock fraud. He probably cleared this city with over $200,000. Yeah. You sure do have an inconvenient memory. But isn't it possible that they're not on to him yet? Would it kill you to admit that? I don't know. I'm not so sure. I am. We got to Roselli before he could pass anything on, except to Drake. 
What you're telling me, Henry, is we off the wrong soldier in the first place. You ready to admit that? Okay, I could have made a mistake, sure. What I want is uh, authorization to correct. Welcome to Prohibition. There's getting to be an awful lot of casualties for a project with such mediocre priority benefits. And I have to justify these casualties to a big committee of short-tempered people. I appreciate that, but it's harder to justify a major bust-up. I'm trying to prevent that. Hey, you know, this ain't the dry-cleaning business. No, it's not the dry-cleaning business. Those were the happiest years of my life. What do you say? Well, we go in steps. Step one, find out if he's got anything to be nervous about. Squeeze him a little. And if he panics, we'll know. All right, but it raises the risks. What it does is make your job a little more difficult, Henry, and that's what you need to keep you calm down. And me. I just don't know what's the matter with me, honey. I didn't even cry. I didn't even frown. That's because you got no heart, lady. Uh, and how about that $600 a month attic she was living in on her salary from the five and dime? <laughs> Well, she just had a flare for uh, interior decorate. What is it, honey? Uh, it's nothing. Uh, look, I think I'm going to go out for a walk. Huh? Well, what's wrong, Joe? Listen, you wait for five minutes until I'm gone, then you get Chris and go over to St. Aloysius, will you? And stay there. But, honey, I... No, just do like I ask you, will you? say it. All right, I'll see you. Varick says there were no detectives following you tonight. Then that's it, huh? They know. And why did those guys stop following me tonight? Then? Could be that they were testing you, that... <sighs> Trying to make sure? Well, they're sure now, aren't they? Father, isn't there something the police can do? A lot of things the police can do, but there is a limit. What are you saying, then? I'm saying it's time for you to do something. Joe, I have a friend, a good friend, in a city a long way from here. He runs a truck... And he just happens to have a job open, huh? It's the best way. Until this investigation makes some headway and they get some people locked up. Joe, I talked to this friend yesterday. He's got a... Yesterday? You were expecting this. I was... Hoping it wouldn't be necessary. Oh. Well, what's the difference, Joe? Father, thank you so much. We'll go whenever you think it's... No, no, no. 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 There isn't... No. Now, you're going to take Chris, and you come back when I tell you it's all right to come back. It may never be all right to come back. That's not my problem. It's not your problem, Joe. Father, he's crazy. He knows what I'm talking about. What about my house? What about the blood I sweated to make that down payment? And the blood I'm sweating to keep it up? I got a wife, a house, and a kid. And I ain't gonna give up any one of them. Now you take Chris, and you go where he tells you to go. A house, honey? You can buy another house. I don't want to buy another house. I want to live where I'm living. 
And the only way they're going to get me out of there is by killing me, if you and Varric let that happen. Is that what this is all about? Are you trying to teach us a lesson? No, no, no. No, you've got a job to do like Varric has and like I have. But you and me, we changed our job, didn't we? I think the both of us would like to feel that we bettered ourselves, huh? supposed to do on Sunday, phone in the mass? Well, Lieutenant's tired too, honey. All right. Okay, you win. You're released. For how long? I don't know. What's the matter with that guy anyway? He's got a place to go. Why doesn't he go there? He just doesn't feel like being convenient. He's just daring something to happen. He's claiming what we owe him, what I owe him. Has he ever heard of the statute of limitations? There isn't any in my line of work. Well, you can go home for the night. He'll be okay tonight. Incendiary bombs down that chimney. I should have checked the back. How is he? His leg's all bashed in. The rest is minor. I know he was lucky. Excuse me. Is it gone? You in pain? Is it gone, my house? Yeah, it's gone. It's burned to the ground. Well, it's a good thing you went inside. I could have gotten you killed. Don't be silly. No? No, you're right. I should have settled for two out of three, which is what I'm going to do as soon as they get out of here. All right. I'll make the arrangements. Your troubles are over, Barney. He's ready to join his family. Sorry, let you and I have a talk. Drake 
Jake's thrown in the sponge. He's going to split to San Francisco. To where? San Francisco. It's where his wife and kids are. There's no point in you hanging around here. Come on, I'll give you a lift. How many times I have to tell you? There's no news. I got nothing for you. But, Freddy, it's your birthday. I got something for you. Half a hundred. What for? I haven't heard a thing. Not for listening this time, champ. For talking. Yeah. Here, Joe. Thanks, Willie. The uh, pink slip is in the glove compartment. Now, you know, you got a bargain here. You're telling me, and thanks a lot. Thank you, Willie. You know, the shape I'm in, uh, I couldn't drive that 600 miles, you know. You're going north, huh? Yeah. I got to Frisco and... Why not, you know, if I don't like it there, I can, uh, I can go up to Seattle. And... You know, the cops are paying up there. Hey, I heard about your house. That was awful. Yeah. Well, it's all covered by insurance. Good. Take her away, Willie. Good car. Okay, Joan, good luck. Yes, sir, that will confirm your reservation for one seat for Russell Dennis for Flight 16. Depart San Diego, 11 a.m., arrive San Francisco, 12.45 p.m. So the, this guy says to me, he says, uh, I heard about your house. He says, oh, that's awful. So you're going up north, huh? Do you think maybe? Oh, no, but you know, doesn't make sense any of it. It could be anything. Uh, somebody on the crew is is working with them. Maybe all of them. You know, who knows? Roselli didn't, that's for sure. I should have put a booby trap in that car of mine. No, I think this way is better. Scary, but better. You know, it's funny I'm not scared anymore. Because of the house? Yeah. I want this to work. You ready? You ready? Have you been gaining weight again? <laughs> it's a losing battle. Anita, is she all right, Sarge? Well, let's hope so, but let's worry about one family at a time. How come I can't come? Because we don't know which way it's going to break or which direction that it's going to come from. And that's the kind of an answer that question deserves. We'll see you later.
didn't think you'd let him do it. Well, that's right. I wouldn't have done it. What'd you do that for, Father? You're about the same height. And with that game leg of yours, I didn't think you had the speed. I keep your hands off of me. Look, I know my rights. I want to call my lawyer. Go! 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 Take it easy, Joe. Lieutenant? What? The uh, guy who opened the exit gate. What's his lawyer's number? What? Never mind. What about him? He's Andy Schiller, who's uh, supposed to be in Mexico. Really making a bundle. They wanted you badly. Lieutenant, they want us to clear the field. That plane's still got to get to San Francisco. Now, I'll put this in the black and white. Okay, hey, this belongs to you, Joe. Come on. Can you imagine that? Can you tell me what town I'm really going to this time? Yep. That's where. Margo's address is inside, and nobody knows where that is, not even him. Well, I guess it's as good as town as any, huh? Hey, Lieutenant. Did this do anything today? It's the best, biggest job we ever had. I'm not saying it cracked the whole case. Or that I'm really safe, huh? Or that either. Yeah. Lieutenant, take a look at that. Do you see where I'm going? Now, I want you to know because I want you to think about me every once in a while. If Joe Drake ain't gonna get eight hours sleep, I don't see any reason why you should. Save. <laughs> 